Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And as ever, China very much back in focus, with those stock markets back on the slide following yesterday's short-lived rally across the global equity markets. Everything is absolutely getting smashed this morning, and uh, most global equities are down, crude oil is down, uh, and FX markets, you're seeing a lot of flows into the Japanese yen as a safe haven. People are buying a little bit of gold as well. And all in all, people are kind of scratching their heads as to what's going to happen next. Um, what number of traders are asking, are, are we in a bear market right now? Well, officially, it's only the Japanese market that is officially in a full-blown uh, bear market. It's down 21% from their August highs. Most other stock markets are actually not as bad as you think. Um, you do have the US 30, I think it's down about 13% from its recent high. Uh, and the UK market is actually the one to keep an eye on. It's down about 18% from its, um, from its highs as well. So it's very close to entering bear market territory, in which case you'd see a large number of headlines uh, mentioning that in the press. Obviously the UK market uh, hit particularly hard because of our big um, input into commodities, oil, mining, everything else as well. Um, but on all, it's not been a great start to 2016. So where do we kind of go from here? Well, the US, the data and the growth isn't that bad. The Eurozone, it's okay. We're not really kind of going completely backwards, but the growth is definitely slowing. China still has gas in the tank. In regards to they, they have their interest rates slightly higher, as we've discussed there before. They could do a lot more with the yuan. It's the emerging market economies that are probably gonna get squeezed that, that little bit harder. Um, but there is a lot of negativity in the market and everybody's looking at the, at the oil price. So at the time of recording this video, crude oil was maybe around about, um, West Texas crude I should say, about $27.60. Uh, and that's pretty much at a very close major uh, support level. Again, 12 year lows, blah, blah, blah. The question is, where, where can it go from here? If it breaks below $27, there's obviously every opportunity that it could go down to 20. I think that's where the next potential support level is. Now, it's not gonna go down there directly, but that is what uh, a number of analysts and commentators are, are kind of singling out as a major psychological level. And normally when people put their finger on a specific um, target price, one way or another, it maybe ends up getting there. So um, you wanna be very, very careful if you're trading crude, it's gonna be incredibly volatile. I wouldn't be surprised to see it's up 5% one day, down 5% the next. Wild swings is a real tough one to trade. Most people are kind of just using it as a barometer as to world growth uh, projections. You know, if crude's getting absolutely smashed, it, means that, uh, it just means the growth projections are that little bit lower. So that's just something to think about. Um, and we're gonna look at a lot of the equities in regards to a technical perspective. You'll see where the major potential support and resistance levels are. And we'll have a look at that West Texas crude in more detail when we get to it. So without any further ado, let's have a look at it from a technical perspective. This is the US 30. 70% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. They must be kind of happy this morning because we are almost at the bottom end of the range. The US 30 is down 1.7% or almost 280 points. The longer term potential support is at 15.315. Looking at the UK 100, as I mentioned, this is a little bit ugly. Uh, when I mentioned it's down 18%, that's from this April high down to here. We are just at the cusp of breaking through a potential support level. 86% of CMT Marks clients are long. They're not gonna be feeling that much love this morning as uh, this candle is pretty negative. Yes, this candle wasn't great either. Even though we did finish in positive territory, it was far off the highs. From a technical perspective, RSI still shows us room for further uh, moves lower. The slow stochastic is oversold. Uh, uh, and as you can see, we have broken that 57.56 right now. If I stick this onto a weekly chart, let's get a bit of a flavor of where the next levels of support could be. I just need to get my drawing tool out right now. Oh, right, okay. Um, 5,600 is the next potential support level that you might look at. Uh, and that's a fair bit away from where we are just now. I just have to see that, how that pans out. Japan is looking very ugly this morning. This is down almost 4%. Technical breakout through 16,440. Where is this next? Oh, the next potential support is really far away. Okay, we need to see how this finishes by the end of the close. So it's, it's, it's breaking out right now. It's not an official breakout until it closes below that potential support. It is massively oversold already. 56% of CMC market clients are currently short. The thing is, everybody's buying the Japanese yen as a, as, as a hedge against uncertainty. It's a safe haven of choice. And uh, that's, that's helping to double whammy for Japan. You've got China, you've got the stock sell-off, 
uh, and it's more than a double whammy, it's a triple whammy really. And you've also got people buying up the yen as that safe haven. So let's have a look at dollar yen. Um, and as you can see from the long leg of candles here that each time it tries to break down lower, people keep buying it again, but uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that pans out later on today. 116 is the next potential support. 52% of CNC Marcus clients are, are currently long, showing the indecision. Uh, and it does look to be that 116 spot 80 is a significant level. So do keep an eye on that. So West Texas crude, we've been talking a lot. Uh, it's currently at 2770. Uh, the longer term potential support is at 2673. Okay, so let's have a look at this from, I think we have to go into a monthly perspective before we can really see how this pans out. Right, this is where we are. Uh, Oh, wow. Right. So you could be looking at this level here and arguably be looking at this. So let's let's keep these levels on here and then jump back onto my daily chart for a second. OK, so there is multiple levels of support on the way down. So you're looking at 2673, 25, 2350. And then after that, things get particularly ugly. OK. Uh, a psychological level of $20. We've got loads of support before we get anywhere near that $20 and crude would have to really get a lot of pain to get down there. 72% of CMC Marcus clients are currently long. Crude is down 2.3% at the time of recording. So then going on to, uh, to gold, gold's getting a decent jump. 54% of CMC Marcus clients are long. Uh, gold's up uh, seven bucks this morning. You can see by these long legged candles here, if you're struggling to break higher for some time, $1,100 is the next potential resistance. Bullish crossover on the moving averages. The other technicals are relatively neutral. I'm not that excited by gold. Let's have a look at Euro dollar. A bounce back up, maybe a technical breakout of this potential descending triangle formation. Uh, the Euro is a safe haven at the moment. 80% of CMC Marcus clients currently short. They're anticipating further losses because uh, they're hoping that the dollar is going to rally. Um, we're not really getting that right now, but if we do break higher, you could be looking at the tip of this candle right here. So around about above 1,000, uh, 1 spot 10. We're a little bit below that right now. Other technicals are relatively neutral, showing room for maneuver. And if we finish up with GBP USD, it's looking really horrible right now. So it's uh, the sterling's not getting a lot of love. Bank of England's Governor Kearney came out uh, basically saying that the UK interest rates are going to be data dependent. Reading between the lines of his statement, the UK is not going to be raising rates in 2016 unless we get some unbelievable turnaround in the macro data events, which is fair enough. If the economy is not strong enough, then that, that's okay. But we've got no gas in the tank if we really need to have stimulus if the rates are so low. Really horrible looking candle yesterday. We're on the wrong side of one spot, um, 42.30. This will be the first time in 30 years, apparently, reading Michael Hewson's analysis, one of our um, uh, analysts here at CMC in London, um, he said that uh, cable is not closed below one spot 40 and change for uh, you know, quite some time, three decades. So that would certainly be quite significant. One of the lowest points that, that cable's been versus the US dollar for a long time. So going on the holiday in America, is, it's gonna be very expensive for everybody right now. One spot 40 is really cheap. If that, if we just go back to here and we go on to, uh, and we have to go into a monthly chart to maybe see this. Uh, actually, no, I'm completely wrong. It's not had a, it's not had a close. Uh, one spot 35.10 was the worst that we've had. So um, it must be for the last eight years since it's closed below that. So let's see how that pans out. Uh, that, is, that is quite a savage looking uh, chart. We're a little bit away from there right now. Looking at it from a monthly perspective, we are a lot. We we are a good bit away from there just now. But one spot thirty five ten would be the next potential support level, and that would be really ugly. Well, let's have a look to finish up on the market calendar. Uh, and today we do have consumer price index, and we've got housing starts in the U.S. And then tomorrow unemployment and the petroleum data. And then on Friday you've got uh, some Japanese data, the uh, PMI for Germany, and existing home sales again for the U.S. to round things up. Well, guys, that's it for me. Very good luck with your trading and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.